What's up guys, Big D Wiz here, OldSchoolStereo.com. This is going to be an epic, I mean epic, unboxing today. This is probably the, um, the item I've been looking for the longest to add to the Old School Stereo collection. So let us not waste any more time. Let's dive in and see what's inside. As you can see on the package here, we have instructions in English and Spanish. So let's dive in and see what lies beneath all of the packaging. Alright, so here's the Power 1000 Terminator Edition. And this is the RCA inputs. As you can see, it has uh, front channel inputs there with gains for left and right. It has a power LED here. The two and four channel here, so you can actually just hook up two channels and press this in and all four will work. Or you can run four channels, run two to the front, two to the rear. Again, each channel is individually gain controlled. There you go, as you can see, you can see me here because we have a very shiny amp. There's a little bit of uh, the chrome here, looks like it's deteriorating somewhat. I've tried to clean that up, but I think it's pretty much just bad. But again, this amp is over 20 years old, so that's kind of expected. And again, there's the fan. Here's the silt screening. We can get it in focus. And you probably see the top of the garage there. There's a power LED meter. And on the opposite end, we have the Molex plug here, which this is an aftermarket one. I'm gonna get that replaced and get a factory one put on there. And you can also see here that we have two and I believe these are six gauge according to Rockford ground connections and we have one six gauge power connection. Now while they have two grounds and one power I'm not sure why wouldn't they have two powers. Normally you're going to have the same flow between the, the ground and the positive so 
Not real sure what's up with that. Maybe it's a noise isolation thing. And here's the bottom of the amp. As you can see, it looks like all the Power 1000s, very similar. The biggest difference between the Terminator Edition, the Chrome, and the uh, earlier models is that there was a caboose on this end where, I'm sorry, the caboose was on this end where the, um, the power and ground were actually, um, they came out a little bit further and they were terminated here and then the wires went out. And these were designed by Wayne Harris and he actually sent me an email kind of describing that process saying that, you know, these amps wouldn't fit in his, uh, his Terminator hearse. So what he did is he took them to a machine shop and had them cut it down and remove the caboose, take about, uh, I believe he said four inches, maybe, maybe six inches off. So it would fit in his amp rack and he got the shrouds chrome plated and he also put the power LED inside. And that was around 1990 and Rockford, their marketing director saw this at the uh, CES and really liked the design. And he said, well, I guess we'll do all the Power 1000s that way. So that's the story behind the Terminator Power 1000, how they came to be. Pretty cool story if you ask me. here we have the power 1000 on the test bench and you can see the LEDs there are lit up we've got a little bit of a problem the rear channels one of the channels is distorted and the other one is not working at all so we'll have to send this off to Landis or Freeman's to get it repaired but that's the chance you take when you buy stuff from people you don't know on Greg's list. But there is the power LEDs. You can see the first one is not working, which I'm wondering if, if the this panel is flipped because it's actually the uh, right rear channel that's not working. So that may, I'm not sure how these work, but anyway, that gives you an idea of how the LEDs work. I had to unplug the speaker because it gets too dang loud in here if I, uh, have the speaker plugged in and have it turned up that loud so you can see the LED meters. That's pretty cool. So there you have it. The Rockford Fosgate Power 1000 Terminator Edition. According to Rockford, about 100 of these were made. 90 of them uh, or so were sold. 10 of them went to Wayne Harris. So this is a pretty rare amplifier. And when it came out, it was $2,650 retail. So not a cheap amplifier. Not many people could afford these. And uh, I know I couldn't. Just kind of dreamed about having one. So got lucky, found one, and here it is. So anyway, this is Big D Wiz. I'm signing off. I'll get this repaired, and I'll put it on the test bench, and we'll see how it does. So you guys stick around. Subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up comment big d wiz signing off i'm out of here